Mid 80s SPID traffic looking decent for the five o'clock hour flowing smooth in both directions in front of our studio. The number we've been looking at on this chart at least the last few days. The dew point started out in the low 60s earlier this week. We're now above 70, so the air starting to have more humidity moisture and it feels a little stickier outside. We do have coastal flood advisories for area beaches. The full moon today coupled with easterly onshore flow pushing water up to the dunes in spots. You see the east flow coming in 10 to 15 miles per hour. Temperatures across the board in the 80s, upper 80s inland, low 80s at the beach. And we do have a field of fair weather cumulus clouds uh, that developed as temperatures warmed today. A cold front in the panhandle is going to stay up there. It'll cross the Red River Valley, the parent system with this is going to track up near the Great Lakes. High pressure still off to our east. This front, not a strong one. Again, it's not going to work our direction, but 60s, 70s uh, and some 50s north of that front. Watching the tropics still, this is in the Pacific south of Mexico. This disturbance about a thousand miles south of us has a high probability of development. We've been talking about this all week. This is where the GFS model wants to take it. This scenario would be a good setup for rain and reminiscent of last week's disturbance. Pamela, the remnants of that storm coming across Texas. That being said, everybody else in town, the forecast guidance is keeping this in the Pacific, which makes me lean toward that scenario. I don't think the GFS will play out like this if it does. So be it, but at this point, it's an outlier solution. Everybody else, all the weather guidance suggesting this stays in the Pacific. What we are watching, I actually had to switch satellite imagery to show you this, but it's in the Bering Sea uh, up in the north of the Aleutian Islands. That's that island change here. There's a disturbance that's moving into the, the, the Bering Sea. Watch this now. This graphic's going to take like 15 seconds to loop out. This is the cold front hunting we were talking about. That's the disturbance, the energy crossing over the Aleutian Islands through the Bay of Alaska into the Pacific Northwest and finally making its way into the southeastern U.S. by Wednesday, Thursday of next week. And if that played out, it would drop a cold front here, putting temperatures in the afternoon on Thursday of next week over seven days away. See there in the upper 70s or low 80s, but still way far out to have any type of certainty or high confidence there, but at least we're talking about it uh, heading into the days up to and leading into Halloween. That would be a good thing. We'll keep our eyes peeled for it tonight. A little bit of patchy fog overnight lows in the upper 60s, low 70s across the region. Highs tomorrow going to bounce into the upper 80s again. Big full bright moon tonight uh, through some of the clouds. Some great pictures coming in last night of that full moon. Upper 60s overnight with some patchy fog tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll start out again in the upper 60s and then find our way into the upper 80s in the afternoon and easterly breeze 6 to 12 miles per hour. We'll be smooth on area waters. If you have any boating plans tomorrow, two to three foot waves at a six second period and 77 on the sea surface temperatures. A little bit breezier into Sunday, Monday, but overall this is what I like to call a persistence forecast because each day going to be similar to the last overnight lows in the low 70s, afternoon highs in the upper 80s, well above seasonal average. So hopefully, Mike, that cold front next week comes to fruition. We'll have our eyes peeled and our fingers.